the reality of it Where you get the truth, the truth. where you get the real Yeah, you can see all the things that's going on all around you Can we tell That's the reality of it Where you get the truth, the truth. where you get the, the real. real Yeah, you can see all the things that's going on all around you And we tell it like it is Here's your card, and thank you for coming to EG Go Car Rental. I heard y'all accept cash. That's right, we're car starting at $19.99 a day. No insurance, right? No problem. I'm only 21, and I don't have any car insurance. Can I still rent a car? That's not a problem here at Easy Go Car Rental. Told you! Here at Easy Go Car Rental, we believe everyone should be able to rent a vehicle. With no credit card, no insurance, and no problem. Go to our website to find an Easy Go Car Rental near you. A better way to rent. Welcome to That's the Reality of It. I'm William. And I'm Kanika. And today we have another fantastic show for you with more information, people that's going to enhance your daily life, and some special guests. And who are the special guests? I ain't telling you. That's why they're special. Is. <laughs> In case they don't show up, right? I can, I can get out of it. But we're going to make sure that you're going to still enjoy the show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. So I switched my car insurance to State Farm. I say 480 bucks. You know what that is? Yeah. Don't say it. You know what it is, right? Yeah, hey, don't. It's a lot of dough. Switch and you could save 480 bucks with State Farm. It's a lot of dough. See if Bryant Jenkins in Reistertown can save you a lot of dough. Get to a better state. State Farm. You can look eye to eye at anyone. When you're wearing the exquisite couture frames from eye to eye, their beautiful exclusive eyewear is imported from all over the world, including London, Tokyo, Milan, and Paris. You will not see these frames anywhere else. The specialists at eye to eye have the finest frames, great personalized service, and they do all the customizing in their in-house lab. So call or come in and get the most fashionable and unique eyewear only at eye to eye Okay, we're back and I'm here with my favorite doctor. Sometimes, except when I get those prostate exams, I don't like you very much. That's okay. I understand. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Dr. Sigmund from Chesapeake Urology, thank you again for coming on the show. Thanks for having me regular. back. You know, we had emails coming about the, um, in fact, you emailed me back about, uh, what was it, um, bladder cancer. Yes. So I want to get into some of that uh, aspect of, because it's becoming like a fear out there for the bladder cancer, because I haven't really heard a lot about bladder cancer. But I know that a very good friend of mine just passed with bladder cancer. And uh, so I'm kind of more into it than I would have normally been. Sure. So let's start with um, what, is what is bladder cancer. Well, you know, bladder cancer is something that we have to deal with fairly often. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it gets overshadowed by prostate cancer because you hear a lot more about prostate cancer in the media and people are much more familiar with it. But as urologists, you know, bladder cancer is really the number two cancer that we deal with. Um, obviously, you have a urinary bladder that holds urine and drains when people want it to drain. Unfortunately, cancer can develop in the bladder, and really the, the biggest risk factors for bladder cancer are people who smoke or people who are exposed to various toxic substances or chemicals or certain dyes that they might work with in their occupation. Okay, what type of uh, chemicals or toxic um, fumes that would... Well, there, there's something called aniline dyes and certain rubbers mm -hmm. uh, that, that if people work with and they're exposed to that. But really, the, the biggest risk factor is smoking. And it, it's really amazing to me. Uh, in my practice, one of the first people I diagnosed with a very blad bad bladder cancer, he presented to the hospital with a lot of blood in the urine. And he was a smoker for a long time. And he could have understood getting lung cancer, but he had no idea that his smoking put him at risk for bladder cancer. It was hard for him to understand. So that's a, another reason that people should quit smoking, and we try to get the word out with regard to that. Man, I had no idea that smoking caused that many different issues. So it also not only lung cancer, but can also cause bladder cancer. It certainly uh, can. And now when you said certain types of... Um, this is going to sound crude, but you say certain types of rubber. Do you mean rubber that men use for sex? Oh, no, not that type of rubber, but okay. rubbers that are used industrially. Okay. Um, okay. Those okay. types we'll of things. clear that up. No, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. The, you be saying, what? I can't. Yeah, yeah condoms, no association with no that, association. But, but, okay. but other types of 
the the rubber chemicals that are that are out there. What are the symptoms? Well, usually people present with blood in the urine, and they blood, blood that's visible or either blood that's visible or microscopic blood. We see a lot of people who come to me with a diagnosis of microscopic hematuria, and what that means is. When we do the, the urine dipsticks and look under the microscope, we see red blood cells in the urine, and that warrants evaluation. And what we do for those folks, we do a, a CAT scan to take a look at their kidneys, their urine tubes, and their bladder, and we also look in their bladder with a little lighted telescope similar to colonoscopy. Yeah. We call it cystoscopy. Okay. And that's how we make the diagnosis of bladder cancer. Now, I came to you and I had uh, what, an ultrasound? Yes. Is that as effective as the CAT scan because they did one for my kidneys and my sure. back and also for, uh, I think, my bladder? Yes. So, so often we use an ultrasound to take a look at the kidneys, look for kidney stones, follow people. We'll mm -hmm. look, do an ultrasound of the bladder to see how well people are emptying their bladder to possibly look at the prostate. But when people have blood in the urine, the recommendation is to do a CAT scan because it's a more specific test to, to look for abnormalities when people have blood in the urine. Really, to, to find bladder cancer, you have to look in the bladder. Most x-rays uh, won't necessarily find bladder cancer unless it's very large. But uh, small bladder cancers we find by looking in the bladder. When you say looking in the bladder, how that, you, that's with the little lighted telescope. That's that a, goes where? Well, it's it's got to get to the bladder somewhere, so we go right down the channel, the urethra, uh, the where penis. people pee through. For for men, we go through the penis, uh, yeah. through the urethra. For women, we go right through their urethras into oh, the bladder. Oh, women can have bladder cancer. Oh, well? absolutely. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so. Ooh. It's not the most pleasant test for, for most people. It's very tolerable. It's, a, it's about a three-minute test. We use a little numb and jelly, and, uh, and usually three minutes later, we, we know what's going on. They say a picture or painting is worth a thousand words, and to make those words stand out, you need the perfect frame. That's when you call the professionals at Frame in Place. The framers at Frame in Place are perfectionists, and they will highlight the beauty of your painting or pictures to give it that perfect look. They will also complement your home decor. The highly trained professionals at Frame in Place take meticulous care in every step of creating that perfect frame. For more information, Go to framing.com. At Liberty Animal Clinic, they know that your pet is a member of the family and you want to make sure they are healthy and receive excellent care. Their top veterinarians and staff will treat them like family and give the best care, medical treatment, and attention you can get anywhere. Liberty Animal Clinic provides these excellent services and they are open six days a week, including giving them a complete physical and office hours are by appointment, so please call. Let your extended family join us! I'm your host, William Allen, and I have some more special guests for you this mm -hmm. evening. I'm here at the uh, Patapsco Arena, mm -hmm. and believe it or not, I am here with the Temptations. That's right. Old school, you know, young folk you heard about. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm going to introduce them. I will let them introduce themselves, because this is a dedication to one of their uh, past members. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so let's start to my right. My name is John Jackson. I sing first tenor, second tenor, baritone, and lead. My name is Delbert Nelson. I sing first tenor, second, and lead. My name is Quentin Troutman. I sing second tenor, baritone, and lead. My name is Larry Griffin. I sing baritone, second tenor, first tenor, and lead. My name is Odell Jones. I sing first tenor, second tenor, baritone, bass, and lead. I can tell that bass is drawn up in there, boy. <laughs> So the legacy of the Temptations is uh, fierce and is so well known and appreciated that how do you feel uh, as the new Temptation legacy going forward? I feel wonderful with that. You know that uh, the original group consisted of, we think, five of the most dynamic vocalists and talented individuals in the world. Uh, Otis Williams is the only remaining remain the original member from the Tim's who carries the name on very proudly and very strongly. We are just honored to be able to have been a part of that legacy by singing with some of the lead singers that was a part of that family, Ollie Woodson and Damon Harris. Uh, we're here today to give tribute not only to those two dynamic lead singers, but to the other fallen Temptation lead singers, like Eddie, Eddie Kendricks, David Ruffin, Paul Williams, uh, and Mel's Okay, so, now, the Temptations were one of my favorite groups from Motown. 
So how do y'all feel at this point um, being related in the sounds and the tribute and the history of the Temptations? First of all, it's a great honor to do the music of the Temptations because they made such beautiful hits uh, during the years. And so, you know, every each one of us, I sang baritone, sings first tenor, first tenor bass, first tenor, second tenor, second tenor here. So those voices coming together, they were intertwined, temptations created that magic. And when we get on stage, we do the same thing. And you know, the Temptations songs, to me, always had a, a, a message. Uh, and it was a mes message to me that said, um, get your act together. I mean, like Papa was a Rolling Stone, you know, get your act together, young men, and don't be going from women to women, making babies, but stay home and do your job. You know, just like it's another one, um, uh, Cloud Nine, okay? It, it, it really depicts the inner city struggles while these young people who are these, having these babies, not being able to afford these babies, and now their only uh, outlet and to release themselves from the pain was the drugs. So the Temptations song had messages that was yeah. like before their time in certain instances. By the way, those two are my favorite songs. Okay. So I hope y'all gonna do that with oh, right? we'll uh, okay. we'll a couple of them that we're gonna do this for you. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, we, uh, we feel proud to be able to carry that legacy on. We feel proud to have even been picked as one of the groups to uh, be a part of it with two of the things we think the most dynamic lead singers that were out there, Ali Woodson and of course, uh, we know do some stuff with Damon Harris along the way. We lost them both to cancer, so it's a very special cause for us to be here today because we believe very strongly that it takes a to get something back in order to get something moving forward. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So, I am here with the Temptations. They actually asked me to join the group to sing because they heard me do my thing, right? So they said, hey man, you know, come, come join us. I had to turn them down because I didn't want to, you know, overshadow anybody. Yeah, you, you, you feel what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. So, 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 so I, you know, I turn them down, but maybe next time, if, you know, if they come back or when they come back, I might give y'all a little summer. Right. That's, that's, right. that's what we need. That's what you need, man. Yeah, that's right. You need a little something. You got a little something. You got a little something. I've got sunshine. <laughs> On a cloudy day, and when it's cold outside, I've got the month of May. Oh, baby, where I guess you say what can make me feel this way. It's my girl, it's my girl, my girl, talking oh, all oh, my girl, my girl, Ooh. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I was singing with the Temptations. Actually, I was just lip syncing, buddy. <laughs> hey, it's a pleasure, man. Thank, Thank you, you, sir, you for Robert. coming on the oh, show. No problem. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, and give me a little bit of something, something. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Go away. We'll be right back. Be on crack cocaine. I used to be on heroin. I used to be on heroin. I used to be on pills. And now we're not. My name is Pamela Dukes. I used to be an addict. Now I'm the owner of By Grace Counseling Services, where we help addicts become productive members of society. By Grace Counseling Services is a certified methadone clinic, and they can help you live a drug-free life. Don't fight those demons alone. Call 443-831-0191. Call now. Help! Someone call the doc. If you want clean air flowing through your home, call the doc. 
If you want to breathe clean air free from pet hair, mold, and dust mites, it's time to call the doc. It's time to call my duck doc. A full system inspection including the furnace, air duct cleaning, dry event cleaning, HVAC cleaning of the AC equipment, sanitizing, UV light installation, pet hair and dust mite removal, mold removal and treatment. Don't take the chance on breathing bad air into your lungs. Call my duck doc and breathe easier and safe. Hi, I'm Dr. Willie Richards and welcome to our segment with health and wellness. And as my guest, I have William Allen. Hi, Thank buddy. you for inviting me again. Okay. I love this segment. I love <laughs> And I know, look, Dr. Richardson keeps getting on me about education. I'm part of the program, but I am really not doing what I should be doing to get the educational aspect of the program so I can even advance and do better. So tell me how important that is. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, education is important because what happened without understanding what you're doing, why you're doing it, mm-hmm. you won't get the value out of what you, that you need to get in order to sustain yourself. In right. other words, right. when we talk about health and wellness, Guys, we're talking about being health, healthy for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. We want to stay well. We don't want the surgeries. We don't want the medication. We don't want any of those things. But the question becomes, what can you do? And there are some things you can absolutely do. You're already doing some of those things. Right, right. I'm doing some of those things. And the products, i got to get some more products, though. Right. Okay. But when I was on the products, me and my son, he swears by it. He said he hasn't been sick since he's been taking them. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. And normally he's, he gets sick sometime each year doing certain mm-hmm part of the year mm-hmm. hasn't been sick so I got to order some more products but yeah I'm doing the healthy uh, 90 for life mm-hmm. but I know I have to get the education aspect of it because I'm lacking in the <laughs> knowledge of these programs yeah. and what I'm supposed to be doing yeah so uh, matter of fact William one of the things I do I emphasize that because uh, if a person doesn't understand what they're doing and why they're doing it mm-hmm. they're not apt to continue doing it see when we talk about the 90 for life program we talk about, about wellness mm-hmm. how long do you want to be well well, most want to, people want to be Forever. well for everything, <laughs> they can, right? right? right. <laughs> or as long as possible, with the fewest amount of problems. Right. I mean, no one, no one wants to end up in a nursing home. Mm-hmm. You can't walk. You can't talk. You can't eat. You can't got all have, these different Can't problems. see half the time. <laughs> can't see which way you're going. Exactly. And a, a lot of the problems that people come down with is really lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I know we like to blame genetics and you know, like with diabetes and arthritis and high blood pressure and all those types of things. But the real truth of it is, it's your lifestyle. It's mm-hmm. the things that you do and the things that you don't do that actually help determine what happens to you. Okay. And that's why I think the educational process in turn, when we're talking about health and, health and wellness, is so important. Because, see, it's not just about uh, what you're eating. It's also what you're not eating. <laughs> okay. That's a large part of the problem because um, the foods that we are consuming on a daily basis, mm-hmm. many of those foods are devoid of nutrition. Devoid of nutrition. No n- nutrition there. Mm-hmm. Which is one of the reasons that the body gets into trouble. And why we're not getting the nutritional uh, uh, aspect of what we think we're getting, right. because it's not even in the plants anymore. We're getting food, but mm-hmm. we're not getting the nutritional value. In other words, when I say nutrition, what am I talking about? I'm talking about um, the essential nutrients that the body needs. Those are actually building blocks. And those building blocks promote and support the body's ability to begin to correct itself. Because the body can heal itself if long you put the right well, look, things it in. Well, look, it created itself all by itself. Right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> if the body can do that all by itself, do you think it has the ability to heal itself? Well, absolutely. But you do have to cut out the bad stuff, mm-hmm. and you have to put in the good stuff. And that's where education will come. That's in. where the education. Let me talk a little bit about some of the bad things. Um, some people, most people probably know a little bit about GMO, genetically modified organism. Well, a lot of the foods that we eat, especially the grains that we raise in this country, a lot of those grains are genetically modified. Well, in some people, it doesn't really agree with them. It doesn't mm-hmm. agree with their system. Mm-hmm. And because of that, there are some breakdowns in that digestive tract. And if you have breakdown in your digestive tract, well, some of the nutrition in the food, you're not even able to absorb it. And people may not know this. And sometimes they're being treated for different conditions that's really a problem associated with the digestive system. Mm. And some of that can even be traced back to mm-hmm. um, genetically modified foods. Okay. Now, genetically modified foods are like processed food. Is that part of no, it? No, no, no. Not so much processed food. Is that uh, take wheat for example? Okay. The wheat has been modified through genetic engineering mm-hmm. so that the grains will grow bigger. So that the grains will grow bigger. Um, the protein is a heartier protein. It's more difficult to digest. And because you can't digest it, what happened is 
it creates like a contact dermatitis inside of the small intestine, which can create all kinds of other problems. Okay. So when we come back next week, we're going to get into more of the um, genetically uh, changed modified, modified food and Absolutely. into the education of how to know which foods are, are that way and knowing the best foods to eat and things you shouldn't eat. Right. And how to read those labels. That, guys, that's really important. Because it tells you everything on the labels. On the labels of foods are labeled, and, but people need to know and, now, and understand how to read that. Now, if they can't... Uh, can they reach you right now in case they want to, you know, they're anxious? As a matter of fact, if they want to get some information, yes, they can call me at 410-698-4848. 410-698-4848. Leave me a message and I will get back to you. All right. So thank you again for inviting me. I got a wealth thank of you, information Wade. already. Okay. And uh, we'll be right back. If you're looking for a primary care doctor that truly puts patients first, then call Windsor Medical Center where you'll get excellent care from award-winning Dr. Nguyen Yu. Windsor Medical Center is equipped to diagnose many health issues, including heart, lungs, and diabetes. We really care about you at the Windsor Medical Center. Call 410-265-7742. Okay, I'm back with uh, Lisa, and we're here at By Grace Counseling Service. And Lisa's going to give her some background on your story, how you got into a situation where you felt like you needed to use drugs. What is your drug of choice? Um, right now, I am in here for heroin. Okay. But I am um, crack cocaine and alcohol are my downfall. Okay. So, but you don't feel the heroin was. It's just the crack cocaine and the, and the alcohol. That was my drug of choice. Okay. The crack cocaine, the heroin. When I started using heroin, it, it became, I couldn't get away from it. Okay. So how long have you been um, do, uh, doing drugs? Since um, I was young. I was um, around eight years old when I had my first alcoholic beverage. Um, eight years old? Yes, sir. Wow. And um, Did I Did you started, sneak it? Yes. Okay, so your parents didn't know you were doing it. No, no, my parents didn't know um, until you know teenagers that really we were you know, drinking and partying as kids. And okay. okay, the reason why I'm asking is because usually if you're at eight years old and you're drinking alcohol, mm -hmm. you got to be acting differently. You can't be acting like a normal kid and have had some alcohol in you, you know, in your body. Well, my it was because there was chaos. And the fam okay, yes. so the fam family so, structure wasn't right. like shit. And it be. wasn't noticeable. Um, I come from, you know, alcoholic parents, drugs. Okay, oh, so your parents did alcohol and drugs mm -hmm. as well? Yes. Wow, so you didn't really have a fighting chance? No. Wow. No, okay. and I come from, you know, alcoholics and drug addiction, very prevalent in the family, and around my friends, the friends that I met, you know, 12 mm -hmm. years old, started smoking with pot, and I pretty much have been using all my life. Wow, that's sad. Yes. That's what made you decide to stop? Because I wanted to have, I, I wanted to have a life. Um, what The way that I was living this past year was no way for anyone to live. In which way was that? Um, I found myself having to do things that were, you know, degrading and very shameful in order to feed a habit that... Like maybe prostitution? Yes. Stealing? Yes. Okay, and you decided that you just had enough of that? Yes. Okay, and how old are you? 38. 38? Okay, so... Right now, you made up your mind, said that is it. Yes, I had a little bit of help. Um, my, my, my boyfriend and I, we both were like, we just don't want to live like this anymore. So your boyfriend was also an addict? Yes, he is. Okay. He's in recovery. He's in recovery as well? Yes. Okay. And you have any children? I have two girls. Okay. And right now, my, my oldest, I really don't have a relationship with. She's 21, my youngest is 15, and um, I'm working on... Building a relationship with them? Yes. Well, they got to feel proud of you making this, this step to, to heal yourself. 
I know my youngest is. She is? Yes. Praise God. And my oldest, I, I do believe she is too, but I think with her, it'll be more seeing it. Right. You know? Right. You were not in your children's life that much because of the um, addiction? Growing up, they were with me all the time. It wasn't until earlier this past year that I um, asked my mom to take custody of my youngest and my oldest, you know, when she turned 18, she went to college. Wow. So okay. I, I, raised the ch I raised both of them and, okay. you know, with my husband, my soon-to-be ex-husband, we were a little family of four. I just hid my addiction very well. Good, good, good. That's awesome. So how has it been for you being here at By Grace? It's been, so far, it's been life-saving. It's, this is my fourth go-around with drug treatment. And I, this I think so far has been the best place for me. What's different about this place than the other ones that you were in April to recover? The camaraderie. Okay. The way, the way, you know, Miss Pam runs it, you know, we are, it's a smaller group, it's a smaller environment. We have rules that we go by, but we're able to interact with each other we do our own peer groups, you know, okay. which are led by one of the the clients, and it's very caring. She comes in and she's really, she cares. She's on top of us. She checks in with us, makes sure we're okay. And the staff here, the counselors, they're here for us. Okay. And it doesn't feel like I'm just a number. Right. You feel like a person. Yeah, I feel like a person. A person with people around you that care. Yes. And when I shared about some of the things that I had to do and go through this last year, I don't feel judged. And you know what the good thing about is because Pam, who owns a By Grace Counseling Center, has gone through exactly what you've gone yes. through, so she can relate. That's, I think that's a big plus when you're dealing with uh, recovering and in a place because if the owner has gone through it, you know she can relate to you. Yes, and, and that makes me feel like I'm not alone. Praise God. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you. Much success in your recovery, and Thank I know you. you're going to get the family back, and you're going to be great. Thank Plus you. Plus, you might be a model. I think you look <laughs> like a model. All right, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I used to be on crack cocaine. I used to be on heroin. I used to be on heroin. I used to be on pills. And now we're not. My name is Pamela Dukes. I used to be an addict. Now I'm the owner of By Grace Counseling Services, where we help addicts become productive members of society. By Grace Counseling Services is a certified methadone clinic, and they can help you live a drug-free life. Don't fight those demons alone. Call 443-831-0191. Call now. So I hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll see you next week. So if it's all good, it's all God, so be blessed. Put God first. Just through Him. All things. All possible.